morning. Welcome to our Saturday morning devotion. We thank God for a new day. It is a new day that we continue with our theme, the true meaning of Easter. It is a season that we are reflecting about the death and also the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it imp- impact it has and what it means for us as Christians. It is one thing to know that Jesus died and rose again. But it's also another thing to ask ourselves, what does it mean in our lives? What does it mean in your walk with him? Has, does it have any impact in your life, in your day-to-day life, in your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your career? What does Easter mean to you in your workplace? Wherever you are, there is a meaning for Easter. And we have been seeing that one Easter brings a new dawn, a new dawn to everything, a new dawn to life, a new dawn to businesses, a new dawn to our day-to-day lives, that things may seem like they are not working, that things may be falling apart as they were at that time, the silent Saturday. But with the, with the rising of, Christ, of Jesus Christ, it brought a new dawn not only to the disciples, but also to us who believe in him. We have also seen that Easter brings a new life, that indeed we can live live in a new faith and a new hope that we are following Christ who died and rose again. We too, we have that hope that we live and live a new life, eternal life, the life we are living today and also after the physical death. We learn today that Easter also brings freedom, that we are no longer in bondage of sin. We know that the wages of sin is death, and death has been overcome by Jesus Christ. He was able to defeat death when he rose again. We are no longer in that bondage, that we are following the laws, but by the grace of Jesus Christ, we are able to overcome those temptations of sin. And that freedom can only come by believing in the Easter story, by believing in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the foundation of our, of our faith. We can only believe in Jesus Christ if we desire to walk the way he walked, if we desire to serve the way he served. He was a servant. He served others. We too are called to serve others. We have the freedom from having sin. Through the story, of dying and rising, through Jesus Christ overcoming death, through Jesus Christ overcoming the temptation to sin, even when he was being beaten, even when he was being mocked, he did not fall into the temptation to retaliate, to revenge, to also fight for himself, or even to insult those who were insulting him. He walked to the last purpose that he lived a sinless life, Yes, we are reminded that Jesus Christ was God, but also he was human. And the reason he came as a human being is that he may go through the things we go through as human beings and show us the way, show us how to live with one another, show us how to live with our neighbors, show us how to live with our enemies, show us how to work where we work with integrity, show us how we should treat our governments and also our leaders, he was able to face all these things that there were the temptations we are facing today, the challenges we are facing today, the trials we are facing today, they were there when Jesus Christ was here. And that is what I want us to learn today, that Jesus Christ, by reading the story and also meditating the story of Easter, we are reminded that we have we have the freedom from sin. In the book of Titus, this is what Paul says. And remember, Paul was a sinner who was was persecuting Christians, those who believed in Christ, when he experienced and when he came face to face with Jesus Christ and he was able to experience the love of Jesus Christ. And he saw the light and stopped living in darkness and came to light. He was able to preach to many. And this is what he says to Titus in Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us 
to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, that the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people, that through Jesus Christ, being born, dying, and resurrecting, we have the grace. The grace of God has appeared to all people, to the world, to the saved and the unsaved, to the believers and the unbelievers. The grace of God has appeared to us all. The unmerited favor, the love that God has showed us, it has come and appeared to, to all. And that grace, that grace that comes by believing in the Easter story, by believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Because Jesus Christ was able to say no because Jesus Christ was able to flee from sin, we too can. If indeed we are followers of Christ, then we have the power to overcome sin. We, the new dawn, the Easter story, brings freedom from sin. Yes, we know we live in a sinful nature. We know our desires, the flesh, the desires of the flesh. But because Jesus Christ was human and was able to say no, and that same grace has now appeared to us all. We are reminded that if we are to live as Christ, the true meaning of Easter is to be able to overcome and to have that freedom to say no to ungodliness, to say no to worldly desires, to worldly pleasures. The flesh may want. We know it is a battle that yes, the heart desires to do what is right before God and the flesh desires to do what is evil because that is what is pleasing to our bodies. But because God, through Jesus Christ, was able to overcome and to defeat the desires of our heart, we too can be able to overcome. Yes, we are human beings, but let us remember that we are in Christ. And Christ is in us. We cannot be tempted and fall like those who are not of Christ. We, we need to show a difference. We need to know and also to live a life like Christ. We need to walk like he walked. We need to talk like he talked. We need to treat our neighbors. We need to treat our enemies. We need to treat those who mock us the same way he treated them. He showed us the way. That's why he had to come as a man to live and to, to record that everything was recorded. This is what he did so that you may also do. In fact, he tells the, the disciples, I have taught you. Now that just go and do likewise. He expects us to do what he did. He expects us to serve how he served. He expects us to trust God the same way he trusted him. He expects us to be obedient to our father the same way he was obedient to our father. And God has showed us a way. And he tells us he is the way. He has showed us the way of life. He has showed us how to relate with people. He has showed us how to relate with God. He has taught us how to pray. All these things he showed us so that we may not continue to live in, the, in bondage of sin, but to have the freedom from sin, to have freedom from the wages of sin, which is death. He has showed us how to overcome sin. We can flee from sin. We can be able to trust in God and say no to ungodliness. Brethren, saying no has become a difficult thing. Many people are falling into sin just because they are not able to say no. Because people will judge them. Why are they saying no? They may look as if they are not as learned as those who seem learned. They may seem as foolish by saying no. Remember, in fact, this story, all these things about the cross, it is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, it is power. But look at the world today, not conforming to the things that are being done to this world, saying no to the things and the sinful acts of this world. It may look unfashionable. And we want to relate with them and we want to be associated with the world to look like them, to act like them, to talk like them. The grace of God has appeared to all men. 
the grace of God has appeared to you. And it teaches us to say no to sin and worldly pleasures. Do you have that power to say no to sin and worldly pleasures? When you think about Easter, when you think about the shameful death, when you think of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, for you to live and to overcome and be forgiven of your sins, then it should transform you to desire to live a sinless life, a righteous life. In fact, that grace, we are reminded, it helps us to live self-controlled, that we do not just live like others do, but we have the conscience to know that this is right and this is wrong. As we do the things we do, we have self-control over them. We do not just live with negligence, but with diligence. The, the same grace of God that has appeared has also helped us to live upright and godly lives in this present age. Titus was being reminded that the grace of God that has appeared to you and has appeared to many should also help you to live an upright and a godly life in present age. Yes, there are many challenges. There are many temptations. People are sinning. And at times it looks so fashionable to sin and to conform to this world. But brethren, we are reminded. It is through the coming of Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, being buried and resurrecting, that the grace of God appeared to us. Let us not take for granted the grace of God. It has taught us to live upright lives. How is your life? How are you living your life? Are you able to say no when you are tempted to live a corrupt life? When you go to an office and you are tempted to do, to give a bribe, that grace, does it teach you? Has you allowed yourself to be taught? Are you teachable that you can say no to sin when things come, when trials come, when temptations come? Do you just fall for them and say that God will understand or I will repent of these sins or you are able to say no to sexual immorality, to say no to greed, to say no to pride, to say no when the temptation of pride comes that you are able to say no. Are you living a godly life, a life that is pleasing before God, a life like Jesus Christ? Are you still in the bondage of sin and yet you proclaim to be a Christian? If indeed we have experienced the true meaning of Easter, then we have power to resist temptations. That is the message that Jesus Christ is reminding us today. That if you believe in the true meaning of Easter, then you and me, we have the power to resist temptations. We can no longer fall to every flesh desire. In fact, we have the wisdom. We have also been revealed that we can know that these are the, de the desires of the flesh and these are the desires of our hearts. And we know the desires of them and we know the fruits of the Holy Spirit and we know we have that wisdom. We have that power to know that this is wrong and this is right. The discerning spirit that you can tell when you are about to do what is evil because you know the true meaning of Easter. Jesus Christ showed us the way. He was able to resist temptation. He has showed us how to be humble so that we can be able to overcome pride. Jesus Christ had it all. In fact, he was able to do anything and everything, but he still lived a humble life. As Christians, God has blessed us in many ways, and he has allowed us to achieve much that we may be tempted to be, or to be proud. Jesus Christ is teaching us that he has given us the freedom and the power to be humble and overcome pride in our lives. To, be, to overcome pride in ourselves, to overcome pride in our careers, to overcome pride because of the achievements that we have, to overcome pride for what God has called us to do, to overcome pride over our talents and our gifts. We may be proud because God has given us to them. Jesus Christ has shown us through this Easter story 
to live a humble life, though there is every reason, there is every temptation to be proud. Jesus Christ showed patience and kindness to those who frustrated him and those who irritated him. We too, we are reminded that we should show patience and kindness to those who are irritating. They could be our family members. They could be our wives, our spouses, those people who are close to us. And they are so nagging. They are so irritating. They are also frustrating. Even our goals, our desires, the things we have planned, the things we want to achieve, they are frustrating us in every way in our day-to-day lives. But God is reminding us that Jesus Christ was patient and kind with them. Let us cultivate patience and kindness in our families, in our marriages, in our workplaces. When people frustrate you, when people irritate you, before you act, just show kindness and patience. Jesus Christ was able, we too, have the power to overcome, to overcome being, feeling frustrated, feeling irritated when we can show patience and also kindness. Jesus Christ also showed us that instead of being discouraged, he had every reason to be discouraged, looking at the people whom he was about to die for them, but he still showed them hope and also faith. He continued to encourage them. He encouraged the disciples. He was able to overcome discouragement and held unto his faith and to his trust in God. We too, as Christians, yes, there is every reason to be discouraged. Looking at how things are, things are not working, you may feel discouraged to come to church because of how people are treating you. You may feel discouraged to continue working because everyone in your workplace is rejecting you. You may feel discouraged to continue with your marriage because things are not working out. There is no love. It seems empty and dead. But don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. He's telling us, can we also go out and show love, show hope, and show faith to those who are despaired and those who are discouraged? We know that God lives in us, that the Holy Spirit is in us, that Jesus has empowered us. He has given us the freedom. Easter comes with freedom to overcome the negative and give the positive, to overcome sin and show godliness, to overcome selfish desires and show love to everyone, to overcome worldly desires and desire what is heavenly because God has given us that freedom. Remember, you can do everything through he who strengthens you. Jesus Christ has strengthened us. The Holy Spirit is in us. Remember Titus 2.11, that the grace of God who lives in you and me has taught us and is continuing to teach us if we allow him to say no to ungodliness, to overcome what is evil, to overcome the temptations of sin, not to conform to this world. Let us start living a life like truly we know the meaning of Easter. Meaning of Easter. Easter comes with the freedom from sin. Overcoming sin. Let us not say that we are weak. We are sinners. And continue living in sin. But let us purpose and choose to do what is right. And to overcome the temptations that have been relating us as Christians. Whatever you have been struggling with. It may be an addiction. It may be a sin. It may be a temptation. It may be a group that has always been influencing you to do something what is evil. The Holy Spirit and the grace of God that has appeared to all men, may it teach you to say no. May you have the power and the courage to say no, to stand and say no to ungodliness, to say no to worldly desires. And let us purpose and desire and make an effort to live upright, to live righteous, to live a self-controlled lives because we know that Jesus Christ showed us the way. He showed us how to overcome these things. He lived as a servant. Though he had every rich, he, he was the richest. He knew that he owned everything as God, but he was still humble, showing that he came to serve God. Let us overcome anything 
that may raise pride in us, that may raise arrogance in us, that may raise irritation in us, that may raise discouragement in us. Let us overcome these things and live a hopeful life, a hope, a life in faith, faith in Christ, and also let us encourage one another knowing that we are no longer in sin, but we have been delivered from the wages of sin and the temptations of sin. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.